Okay, today is October the 2nd, 2007. My name is Tanya Fincham. I'm with the Oklahoma State University Library, and we're doing a project called Women of the Oklahoma Legislature, Past and Present. And I'm here in Oklahoma City with Trish Whedon, who was in the Senate from 1988 through 2000. Okay, thank you so much for having us. Well, thank you for okay. inviting me to, to be here. <laughs> Okay, let's start by having you tell us a little bit about your childhood, where you were born and that sort of thing. Okay, I was born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and um, I'm one of seven children, born to Carl and Ted Throckmorton. Uh, I'm the third oldest from, I'm the third from the oldest uh, child, uh, five girls and two boys, and uh, my dad was on the farm, of course, uh, from the time I was born, had a farm and uh, raised a large garden. And then when I was about nine years old, my father then bought some property and thought how exciting it would be to help the farmers that lived about 15 miles from the nearest town. And of course we had a truck garden back then and sold vegetables and had cows and milked and everything. And uh, he thought how how good it would be to uh, to purchase a large fuel tank a gasoline tank and buried in the ground and have one pump and be able to sell farm to farmers uh, gasoline so they wouldn't have so far to travel and um, you know to have it available much closer to the farms so that's what he did we had uh, vegetables that we sold was on a highway highway 39 uh, between Lexington and Asher it was our home about halfway and uh, so dad bought that piece of property and thought, well, you know, he'd just do that along with selling vegetables on the highway. And Interstate 35 was going through at the time and had gone as far as Purcell. So the traffic was tremendous. The traffic was, um, was you know, had a lot of cars and trucks on it. So, and it just grew in, in traffic. And so daddy's business kept getting busier and busier. And as, you know, as he, um, as time went by, and then he started uh, started selling to automobiles. He put two tanks in instead of one. So that's how it kind of started. And my parents owned a truck stop and restaurant, 24-hour day business from 61 on. And it just became a large, uh, large business. And we worked a lot. All of us kids, seven kids, worked a lot. <laughs> so... And what was your mother's role in all of, all oh, of that? Well, my mother, of course, was the mom of the house until it got so busy and we were open 24 hours a day. And then she worked just like we did. You know, it was a 24-hour day business and it was just run by family for many years until it became such a load because we opened, Daddy built a restaurant. Daddy would build, uh, Daddy, when he, as he, had enough money, he would buy cement blocks at a time. Mm -hmm. And dad would buy enough blocks until he had enough to where he could hire someone to uh, to put up the building, the, the gas station building. He, would, he, uh, he just worked out of the pickup. And then we had that, you know, we had a little place we sold vegetables. And, um, and that's just how we grew up. And then we learned how to work. And how to cook and clean. Cook and clean. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Until until we had a business, a 24-hour-a-day huge business. And and um, we had a restaurant, and I cooked. I learned how to cook a full-course meal by the time I was 12. So 12, 13, 14 years old, we had to d learn how to do that. And so when did you become interested in politics? Oh, interested in politics. My dad was very interested in politics. My dad's the one that encouraged me and... Uh, uh, of the seven children, I'm the one that was always the one that was excited and involved in uh, civic organizations and in school. I belonged to every club. I was president of this class. I was just belonged to everything I could get my hands on, you know, uh, because I was at one ed and I was one of 12 students in, in school, you know, a very mm -hmm. small school at one ed, Oklahoma. So I was there 11 years. And I went to school at one ed for 11 years. So... I, uh, I, but as far as politics, my dad was involved in Lyle Bourne's campaign when he was in Congress, uh, President Bourne's father. And um, so that's how my dad, he would talk about that and he would help commissioners uh, get elected or work on someone's campaign. And, and 
and then my grandfather was very involved as well, my, my dad's dad. And they were from one aunt and raised and born and raised around one aunt. So that's where I was raised. And so it was just, they just it was instilled in me. So that's how I got involved. Well, when and where, or what were the circumstances that surrounded your deciding to run for office? When uh, I was, I guess I was 21 years old, I went to work at McLean County Courthouse. I went to work for the treasurer and was there for approximately eight years. Um, seven years I worked in the treasurer's office with deputy treasurer. And the treasurer was very, very involved in the Democrat Party at the time, state party and the county party and the, and the McLean County Women's Democrat Women's Club. So that's, she would take me with her because I was the one that was young and, and I was the one that really wanted to, to, to know everything I could know about politics. You know, I wanted to be involved. Now, my dad, by the time that I was in high school, and of course we had our business and we were so busy, dad didn't and wasn't really involved at that time like he was when he was younger and we were very young. And of course, my dad was much older than my mother. So uh, that, you know, he was, you know, dad was 36 when my mother and him married, and then he had seven kids. So, uh, but uh, dad, you know, got me involved. But when I really got in, um, personally involved and worked in the party, it was when I went to work for the treasurer and she was involved. So I went with her everywhere and I was thought, oh my, I would meet candidates that was running for state office or governor, lieutenant governor or Senate or, or house representative. And I, oh my, I was so excited and I just loved every minute of it. And I would help and the best I could and go door to door and I got involved in that way. And then uh, some of the county races and, and, um, there wasn't very many incumbents that had opponents then. You know, once they were elected, like the assessor, um, been there 52 years, and so he was had been assessor 52 years. But anyway, that's how I got involved with her, and I would attend state conventions, and I would uh, just get to be a part of it and got to see people, and, oh, I was just, it was the most thrilling thing in the world for me. <laughs> so that's how I got started. And before you threw your name in the hat, what, what led up to that? I mean, like the last first I, couple of days? Or well, I was deputy treasurer at the time, and and as I said, the assessor had been there 52 years, and he became ill and wasn't able to walk up the steps to the second floor. He was 87 years old, I believe was his age, Casey Kavner, and uh, he'd been there many, many years, and so his first deputy that had been with him for like 36 years had already retired. She had already retired. And uh, when he became ill and wasn't able to work anymore, and like I said, walked to the second floor to his office, we didn't have elevators, so he couldn't go to his office. He decided to resign and uh, retire. And the first deputy, they talked her back, he talked her into coming back out of retirement and finishing out his term. And I can't remember his two or three years he had left in his four-year term, but that was in 1978. And so I was, and at that time, I thought, you know, because I wanted to, I always tried to learn everything I could about every office while I was there. And so I thought, you know, I can do this. And I was not quite 28. I was 27 years old at the time when I had decided. And um, so... I decided that at that time, because she wasn't going to run for office again, and it was going to be an open seat, so I decided to put my name in the hat, and I thought, well, you know, it won't hurt anything. I'll just try to do my best, and I thought, you know, I can do this. I, I can run for office. So there were four men and myself that to run. I ran, and I was the youngest, and um, so I ran, and then it was just Democrats. And so there was, of course, I was the second in a place in the top, and because the first, uh, the top uh, vote getter did not get 50% plus one. So I was second in line. I think he had beat me by 52 votes. And um, at, at that time, he had 52 more votes total than, than I did. And so him and I was in the runoff. And that was in August. Then we had the first election. And him and I then was in the runoff. And I beat him by uh, 235 votes, I believe, <laughs> in the runoff. And so that was it. Yep. And I was elected in 19, 
1978. So you had a little practice before you started campaigning for the Senate. Then. Well, uh, well, I had been there. I served 10 years. I, I had uh, been elected three times, and I had I was serving in the middle of my uh, third term. And I had decided that at that time that, and I'd prepared, you know, it was something that I wanted to do someday is mm -hmm. to run for state senate someday. So I, it was my time. I knew that if it was the time for me to run, I would know if it was that time. And, and in the middle of my third term in, this, in the assessor's office, the time I felt was the right time. And so I ran. I put my name in the hat, 1988. Why the Senate versus the House? I never wanted to run for a House. Any particular reason why? <laughs> or you don't want to say? No, no, no. That's okay. I just, uh, uh, as a assessor, as assessor, I had I was the president of the state association during that time, and I worked on a number of legislative issues. I stayed at the Capitol a lot because I was on the legislative committee for the state association as assessor. And I had worked in committee and helped draft legislation, you know, with, with the legislator at the time that we had issues that we wanted to try to get through the legislature, either change or new language. And, um, and, and I had, I loved going to the Capitol. I loved work, working in that aspect of, my uh, my job duties, which I loved, and uh, and so through that, I mean, it was just an ambition that someday maybe you know that I would run for legislature, and but I tried to prepare myself during the entire time. I tried to prepare and and be ready, you know, to, in case that time came. So I learned as much as I could, and as far as the process mm -hmm. and how legislation was, um, what they did, and and the process itself. So then, when uh, I felt like it was time in 1988, well, I, I thought, well, this I'm either going to, and I had to resign my position to do so. I couldn't keep my job, so I had to resign in April, and then we filed in June, and um, or July. I can't remember. They've changed so many times. I think it was July. Uh, I filed for office and, and started going door to door. Who was your campaign manager? I didn't have one. So yourself? <laughs> I just had myself and lots and lots of people. But I couldn't afford a campaign manager. At that time, I uh, I just, you know, it, I walked and worked. And I, and like I said, first time when the assessor, I had no money. I was very young, had two children, married, had two children. And when I ran for assessor, so I did not have any money at all. And uh, back then, uh, they just didn't, you know, spend people didn't much. spend as much. Well, we didn't spend as much, but people just didn't um, uh, give to campaigns like they do now, like they did back then. And of course, I was a woman. I was 27 years old. I was running against college-educated men that had, had an education and that had been in the community and their families were well-known. And I was in McLean County and I was raised in Pottawatomie County. So, you know, a lot of people did not know who I was or I didn't have that family connection in McLean County. But the only way they knew me is when they came to pay their taxes in the treasurer's office, you know, but I I always let them know who I was. They knew who I was, you know, because I helped with that. But anyway, that's how it kind of, it started. And um, not uh, a lot of doors. Oh, but I, my, I think my signature when I ran from the very beginning to to even the last year I ran in 1996 for Senate was my business card. It had my information on it, my picture on it, and my name. That's what I spent my money on. And uh, that's all I had. I spent uh, $752 in two races in money. I walked in my first race in 78, and I walked it. I made phone calls. Uh, I And my opponent spent, I think, 14000 in the two races. Okay. And full page out. It was a male. Okay. I've never ran against a woman, okay. ever, in any of the races that I've uh, ever been on the ballot. And... And even in the Senate race, even then, um, uh, you know, I ran against a lot of money. People that had money in their, you know, their own personal money that they used, and I didn't. I had the least amount of money of anyone ever in every race except my last one, I think. It's the first time in 22 years that I had more money than, that, than my opponent did. 
after I'd been in the Senate for um, eight years then, and and then had been elected ten years in the Assessor's Office. But it's just, I, you know, um, and I have a hard time asking for money for myself. Now, I can raise you a lot of money, but I can't raise myself very much. I can raise people money. I love to, I love to raise money for things that I believe in. But, Did you have a slogan, a campaign slogan? Well, I, uh, really my not. pastor, I, I can remember, I still have the article. It's a newspaper article. It was an ad when I ran for assessor. And um, the slogan was, and I, I debated whether to do this or not. It's a full-page ad when it was the, set, uh, the first year of my Senate race. And, and um, the one thing that I, that I did have this ad is that uh, the senator, uh, I had ran against a, a senator's brother that had been in the Senate. I didn't run against him. But, uh, and his last name was Branch. It was Senator uh, Bill Branch. And his brother I ran after I'd been in the Senate for four years. And uh, my pastor at the time, he said, Hey, I thought up a slogan last night. I said, oh, what is it? Because it was in a primary runoff. And I said, what is it? And he said, I'd rather be leading with Whedon than out on a limb with a branch. <laughs> and I still have that, you know. And we printed, we printed that on a full-page uh, ad with my picture and everything. It was just the, it was the funniest. I look back now and I say, oh, my. That was the, that was the funniest uh, uh, ad I think I had. Uh, most memorable ad that I ever had because our pastor thought it up and he said, you know, we're going to have to get somebody to write something up in a cartoon-like thing, you know, right there. And we did. And we had it done and we put it in the paper. It's for sale paper? Yes, for it's for sale paper. We'll it's a full-page ad. 19, it had to have been in 92, probably 92. Let's see if we can find, find that. <laughs> I have it. I, it, I, it was framed for me. Some friends framed me that and it's a full-page Ad in the Purcell Register, and it was fun. It was fun at that time. But anyway, well, do you remember your first day in office? Oh yes. Well, or in the Senate, in or whatever. The swearing in, in, in the, the Senate, in, in the Senate. Oh yes. Uh, justice Apollo was uh, the the Supreme Court justice or justice at the time that swore me in. I'll never forget it. I was just absolutely ecstatic. I just. I couldn't believe it. I can remember driving to work that morning and going, you know, in the car and going to the Capitol. And I'd been to the Capitol numerous times, but of course I'd parked in the South parking lot with everybody else and parked. And this time I had an assigned parking spot and they, I mean, it was just the most exciting thing. And I thought, oh my, what have I done? You know, am I worthy of this? Can I represent my people like I want to? And that's been my, that was my whole, my, my entire thought and when I decided to run was I just wanted to be there for my people, represent my people. Well, how many showed up for your swearing in then? Oh my. Family. I think the first, the, well the first one I think I had about, well we weren't supposed to have but about 10, you know. <laughs> but I think I had about 20. But I was really close to the Capitol. It's, it was a lot different than having uh, some some legislators that was sworn in because there were 12 freshmen that year. Okay. Uh, there were the half, half of us run 24 every two years and half of us were freshmen, were freshmen. We were elected and um, so it was, there were a lot of us that year. And you know, they talk about term limits. There was, there were term limits at the ballot. I mean, we had 12 out of 24 that had either retired or been, had, had an upset. There were a number of legislators that year that were upset. How many other women do you remember? Uh, the the women freshmen that came in that year. Um, let me think of my freshman class. Well, um, oh my, let me think. You may, not, you may <laughs> be the, the only one. I, I oh my. Uh, Oh my! I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't remember. I just have stinking of the twelve because we were we were all pretty close. So, you know, we stayed pretty close. He was the mouth. No, you weren't there. They had mouth of, mouth of the house. They didn't do that in the city. No, no, they, we didn't do that in the city. No, no, no. That was just not kosher. <laughs> oh, we right. Uh, it, everything you know was different in the house and the senate. They were different and. I just never, you asked me why did I decide to run for Senate, did I want to run for the House? 
I just never, ever uh, desired to run for the house. Um, did you live at home while you were? Yes. Or did you as long as my children were at home. I had uh, my oldest daughter at the time was uh, 13. And uh, so they, well, I still had two daughters. I, I had two daughters and they were still at home. But my husband and I had worked it out. He drove a truck. He hauled cars out of the GM plant. And uh, so he would get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and he would be home by the time the girls got out of school. And I was always with them in the mornings and always took them to school or waited till they went to school. And then, of course, I had family and my mother, and, and I had a lot of family in town in case something happened to get there quickly. But, um, but we always worked our schedules out to where we were with the girls most of the time. Both in one or both of us. So describe a typical day. And how early would you get to the Capitol? How would you well, uh, like I said, when the girls were at home and when I was first elected, I didn't have the responsibilities that I did as I was okay. there for a number of years and had committee chairmanships and, and things like that. So uh, when when I was first elected, I would get there. The girls would be in school by 738, you know, would be at school. And I'd go directly to the Capitol. Most of the committees did not start till nine, 10 o'clock in, in the morning's committee process. And then, and of course, if I needed to be there earlier, I was, the, you know, like I said, I had a lot of family there in town or the girls were older and they drove, you know, the oldest one drove after a while. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, I would get there eight, nine o'clock in the morning and typical day was, and I was, I was very seldom home early in the afternoon and at night. I had either attend functions or, and I always, uh, if someone invited me to speak in my district, and I was close enough in home that I could maybe go to a breakfast at eight or seven mm -hmm. o'clock in town or in my district because I lived central. I lived halfway inside my district because I had Norman all the way to the Sulphur exit on my mile marker 50 in Garvin County, I had all that. So, and I lived in Purcell, which was about halfway. So, I was close enough that I could attend functions at night, and I was most usually home late. Um, I would leave after the girls went to school, as I said, but then it would be late in the afternoon or late at night before I would get home. I would stay at the Capitol late for meetings or attend functions in, in uh, Oklahoma City, or I would attend something in my district at night and weekends always had somewhere to go speak almost every night uh, every night but I tried to be very accessible to my people and if I was invited to attend a function I always felt like that they really was important that I come mm -hmm. and be there if they invited me in. so the first first person or first group that invited me that's where I that's if I accept that's where I went very busy then, sounds yes, like. Yes, I was. And being close to the Capitol, I think you're busier than if you just stay there and you couldn't get back to your district. If you close enough to where you can go to your district in the evenings and nights and attend all kinds of functions, school functions and county functions and, and just all kinds of organizations and commerce banquets. and didn't have to cook for all those years. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> not very much. Well, do you remember the first bill you presented on the floor? The first bill I presented on the floor was, um, uh, well, I, I thought about that. I've thought about that numerous times. It was it was a couple of years before I really had my own bill. Now, I'd debate them, and, um, and, but I felt like that I needed about, I guess it was a year the first year I did not have a bill. And... Uh, it was a county bill. I believe it was a county assessor bill that they had asked me to run, and I felt like I was very knowledgeable about that, and I was on general government uh, committee, so I, I, it was to do with the county assessor's position, and it was an issue, I think, with mobile homes. It was what it was, because we were having a, a really hard time. You know, we kept changing back and forth, whether you tag a mobile home or, you know, pay property tax on it. It was back and forth. So that was my first, I think, my first bill that actually went through and passed and went on. So, You want to talk a little bit about some of your other bills that you're proud of? Well, I guess the first uh, very emotional, controversial, hard decision I, I had ever had to, uh, that I voted on, was the uh, 
House Bill 1750. Uh, that was the education bill and where they increased taxes to fund education. Very, very controversial bill and um, just barely passed. And uh, when uh, Governor Bellman was in, that was my, um, I guess the most, um, well, it wasn't for me because I was so pro-education and I wanted to do whatever it took to get the best possible education for our children in the state as I could. And I knew that we, we had to do something. But as far as controversial, because, it, you know, you thought, you, you had to think at the time that if you voted for a tax increase then, that you probably wouldn't be back. But that was the decision that I had to make. And I felt like it, whether I came back or not, it was the right decision. And um, that was the most controversial bill. And of course, what is very uh, passionate to me and uh, very important to me was uh, partial birth abortion to, to stop that. And I was the author uh, that, uh, and, and it passed, that in Oklahoma there could not be any partial birth abortions performed. And uh, so, you know, and me being a Democrat woman was very controversial. I uh, received a lot of phone calls and a lot of letters and how disappointed they were in, you know, that I was a woman, number one, and that I was a Democrat. Uh, but again, that was my heart. It was my passion. And I'm, I am pro-life. And, uh, but I, but, you know, I'm very open to, uh, you know, the life and death of the mother and incest and rape. And, um, but as far as just for birth control, that I don't agree with that, but that that's where I stand. Everyone knew where I stood, and uh, that was another issue that was very controversial a lot at, at the time. At the time, did you notice any difference between the treatment <clears throat> of men and women during during the early years there? Early years there, um, because there are so very little women in the in the legislature, and still at this time, there's still uh, the percentage is very small. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like, <laughs> I was one of the old boys. I was one of the good old boys. <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I got along with everybody. I, I mean, women and men. But as far as the treatment, uh, I, uh, well, I would say that there was a difference. I mean, of course, um, there wasn't as many of us to, are in our issues, women's issues, as far as health and children and, and, um, because and but there were a lot of men that had the same views and the same concerns we had. The difference in the women, um, I can't really say that there was a difference that I saw. Uh, there were women. I mean, at the time, Senator Shedrick was chairman of of education. She was uh, in the part of the appropriation process. She was leadership. Penny Williams was as well. They had already. They were there. Penny had come from the house, and I mean, there were some powerful women. Carolyn Taylor, uh, Thompson Taylor was from Norman. I looked up to her. I mean, the things that she accomplished and was appropriation chair, and that was just, I mean, women were very much a part of the leadership in the House and the Senate, very much so, and uh, never was speaker pro tem, you know, yeah, as of yet, you know, Jerry Askins got as close as anybody at this point, but, but uh, again, as far as leadership, and it's like uh, um, Representative Winchester, you know, I mean, she was, you know, pro temporary of the House, and leadership positions women have had, and still have, um, but again, I'm waiting for the day where speaker pro tem, <laughs> so, but as far as different, oh, there may have been a time or two, but I think it would have, men thought the same thing. You know, there, I'm sure there's times that men uh, believe that, and it might not be the gender issue, but it could be just where you're from or age or maybe where you, the, the, the district that you represent or whether it be rural, urban, and just not just, I don't think women and men, I really can't say because we were a family. Now we could get, we could get between each other and get in each other's face, you know, debating a bill and Democrat, Republican, man, woman, whatever on certain issues. But 
when the, at the end of the day, we were family. We were, at, when I was in the Senate, we were all Republican and Democrat alike. We would all go out and be together and in the evening or attend functions and laugh and, and enjoy each other. And very few bills did we truly, truly disagree right down the middle partisan when I was there. It just wasn't that many times. There were few, but very seldom. Very seldom. Did the women seem to group together? Mm-hmm. Or, okay. And the men was real nervous when we did. <laughs> We would all huddle together on the floor, and they say, "Oh my," because it didn't take very many of us, you know, to make a difference. <laughs> if we really had an issue that we really wanted to see uh, something happen or change, well, you know, we just we just worked together, worked very hard, and and uh, tried to get that done. So, and that was the same for the whole twelve years. It was the it twelve years. Yes. yes. And you chose not to run for your last. My last term, I could have ran one more term uh, with term limits, but my husband was diagnosed with cancer May the 5th. And uh, I turned 50 years old May the 10th. And uh, and it was a decision I had to make because I I had to run for re-election. And my husband had two surgeries. He's doing wonderful. He's great right now. But he, uh, at the time, we didn't know. And I had to be with him. I had to take care of him for approximately three, four months. And I was with him. I never left him. And I couldn't, I couldn't campaign. And I had to make that choice because I had to know something by the 1st of June. We were out of session, I think, the 25th of May, the last Friday of May. We, you know, adjourned and... I didn't even, I hadn't even told the pro team because I wasn't for sure, you know, what I was going to do at that time. We were waiting on the biopsies to get back and the tests to get back. And and after the second surgery, I just had to be with him to take care of him. So there wasn't a decision to make. I mean, other than I just couldn't, I couldn't campaign. And I knew I had to campaign because I already had a Democrat and I had a, I'd already had a Republican come out. And um, uh, in January, that was Senator Nichols, had come out and announced in January. And, um, but I mean, it wasn't an issue. I'd already raised $132,000 and, mm-hmm. and I'd already had fundraisers the entire time I was in the Senate, you know, in my hometown. And, and uh, all throughout my district, I started having them in November in Garvin County. And we just then I raised uh, a lot of money and, uh, and I gave it all back. I wrote them all checks and gave them all back. So after I decided not to run. So. Well, at some point, could you go back and do one, four more? I could one, do four one, more years, yes. More years yes. I could run two more House. Mem- house. Uh, I could run for the House for two terms or I could run for the Senate. Mm-hmm. I can. Yes, I can. I always want them to know I'm out there. <laughs> <laughs> but I doubt if I do. <laughs> Because I had, uh, I retired, you know, after th- I'd been in for 32 years. I'd been a state employee re- for 32 years, so I could retire. And I, and, and I did, so, after that. But, uh, well, let's just change the gears just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Where you were in uh, the Senate in 95 when the bombing occurred. Yes, yes, I did. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget where I was. Uh, we had We were to go in session at 9.30 that morning, and I went home the night before. And I was almost di- directly to the east of the building on the on 235 on on the interstate. I was directly to the east of it when the black smoke. I mean, my car ship. I thought it was an earthquake. I thought that it, you know there's been some, an earthquake. Some thing I could think of when my car moved. I, mean, I could feel the motion. Because I was up on the on the interstate, up on the road, and uh, and then I saw this black smoke. It was just black, barrel black, huge clouds of smoke, and that's where I was at the time. And I was on my way to the Capitol, and of course I would I got off on the Lincoln exit, you know, right there about where I was, 
and I got off uh, there to go on to the Capitol. And by the time I got to the Capitol and walked into security, they, you know, and I, they had pretty much, they, everyone thought it was just gas, you know, something, the gas uh, leak or something, something had exploded, is what everybody thought at first. And then, of course, it was just a few minutes, and then they completely cleared the Capitol. And after we found out, and, and um, was at the Capitol when I found out what had happened. And, of course, they told us to go then, just immediately get in the car and go home. We like to never got home. Everybody was being let go of all the buildings. We got out a little bit earlier than some, uh, than some of the other state employees, I think. But by the time the word got out and they cleared the, all of the buildings, but they started bringing in dogs and, you know, everything. I'll never forget that. When did you go back to work then? Well, I went to regular, not, well, it was quite a bit of time. It was, um, I can't remember that. I think it was Thursday. On Thursdays when it happened, I believe. Thursday, a day, that day of the week. Because we always went in early and I, I, I think it was Thursday. And then, of course, we would, wouldn't go back. We didn't go back to the Capitol for a week. or. But I went down. First thing I did, I had to do something, you know, after I got home and I didn't want to be a part of the problem and I didn't want to, um, but I went to feed the children headquarters and help take phone calls for food and, and whatever. And they were asking for things by then quickly as to what the, the rescue workers needed and what people were just bringing things in. And I thought, well, okay, I can go to that site. And so I went there and helped answer phones and, and do things uh, that for about, well, it seemed like, I don't know, all night. It seemed like the next day, or you know, I stayed quite a while. And then I went down to the site. They took some of us in to help at the site to help feed and, and to just do whatever. So that was just some of the things that I did before we went back to Capitol. Well, any other memorable events? Things that popped to mind during that time that are during my time is yeah. well the tornado you know that happened at Bridge Creek okay. and it was Bridge Creek was up my district but Newcastle and um, I mean I can think of events that happened in my district that I tried to help and participate in and to do what I could to help my people and um, that was devastating that was the we had a lot of people die. And, uh, you know, that 27 people, I believe, that passed away, that died in Bridge Creek when it came to ch from Chickasha, and it just kept on and on. And then a number of my friends, of course, were hurt. A number of people were hurt, and, um, and it came up through Newcastle, and then, of course, Midwest City, and, mm -hmm. you know, Carolyn Steger was hurt real bad. And, you know, it's just, and it's like the bombing it had people that I knew that was killed in a bombing or um, was hurt really bad. Still see them today, you know, and visit with them a little bit or don't talk so much about it, but just know they're okay, you know, know they're okay. Um, that and, uh, and then, of course, any event that would happen to my district, like tornadoes and floods, and, and it just seemed like I just couldn't get there fast enough to, to just make sure that they got what they needed or if I could help you know, call someone or anything was my main goal because I always wanted to be there for them, always. And if the phone rang, I answered it. I never let the machine get it. And that's what people couldn't understand. Uh, my family and other individuals that might be at the house or for my church group or someone would be home. If that phone rang, I answered it. Why don't you let the machine get it? And I've never had a caller ID in my life. I never had one. And so, won't you get a gun? I said, no. I mean, it, I feel like when people called me, the majority of the people in my district called me. They had, they had tried everything else they could before they called me. They were so desperate that they needed to call me to see if I could help. And that's why it was so important that I, that I call them. And back, if I didn't get the, if I did have to take a message, or if I wasn't there, or I always called them, I always got back to them. I was like, you need to run again. Oh well, <laughs> but to me, the Senate position and the House position is to represent your people. 
that's what the job description to me is. And if you don't do that, I don't think you need to be there. That's just what I think. Do you uh, know of any obstacles that were particularly placed in your in your path or not? No, not really. Piece of cake. Huh? Well, no. <laughs> oh boy, no, it's not a piece of cake. I wouldn't say, but I, oh, a, a lot of uh, uh, stressful decisions because you know you 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 think you want to do what's best for number one your district in the state of Oklahoma. Everything, every time you cast a vote, it affects someone. You have to think about how it affects someone, and. You know, um, that because there's always someone for and against every issue out there. And and I think another one of those issues was the vote that I took to create the um, Oklahoma State School. I mean, the uh, Math and Science School. That was another vote that I can, you know, you look back now and you see all the wonderful, wonderful opportunities that children have had and the education educational uh, uh, the, the education they've received and because of the math and science school it's one of the most wonderful wonderful things that could have ever happened in Oklahoma I think for high school students to have that ability or that opportunity to to go to schools and get the education because they are so advanced and at the little rural schools that I represented some of them they, they couldn't possibly have gotten the classes that they needed because they, you know, they couldn't didn't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And and that was another um, very um, excruciating decision that I made because a lot of people in my district did not want to do that, want me to pass that and tax and, that, uh, and make that available to people because my district would never, ever, ever see that. Uh, children in my district would never have that opportunity to be for urban metropolitan kids. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's not, that is not the intent. And I will do everything in my power to make sure that doesn't happen. I mean, that's not the, only the kids that's gonna be chosen. You know, the ones that apply is gonna have a really good, um, uh, they're going to they're they're going to go through those applications and they're going to give all the ones the opportunity not just not just big schools and, and large metropolitan areas and of course that's that's happened oh hundreds of students and thousands of students in rural Oklahoma have uh, received the education at the math science school and went on to to do wonderful and great things and the opportunity they they would have in their community they you know they would have excelled and, and had a wonderful education. I don't mean that, but some students just had the opportunity to excel, and they had that opportunity, and I'm just so excited. And that was another big, big decision and a vote that I took that, uh, you know, that you had to think about. And uh, Were there any disappointments, ones you really pushed for and just couldn't get, get quite past? Major, major ones. Major ones. Oh, I'm sure um, there's always some. Um, I well, I just haven't thought of that. Um, in twelve years, you you have so many. <laughs> yeah, so I, I I can. You had to you read know, a lot of bills. Had oh Oklahoma. yes, yeah. ma'am, yes, ma'am. I had a lot of a lot of bills, a lot of uh, different issues, and that's why you have to depend on so many people that you trust. And it, it's because I I knew a lot about county government. I'd been in it for many many years and watched it and been a part of it. But I uh, but I wasn't a teacher. I wasn't an educator. I wasn't in insurance. I wasn't in uh, you know I wasn't an attorney. I wasn't. So you have to depend on individuals that you trust to tell you. And we and they did the same with me with county bills. You know when when something would come up that you just uh, have that faith and that trust in your colleagues and, and people that you know that you can ask to tell you, you know, how, how it really would affect that, that, uh, uh, that issue, you know, and their expertise. So. 
What, what committees were you chair of? Uh, General Government Committee, and I was in. And aging is another issue that's very passionate. I'm very passionate about as seniors, and um, I was on the subcommittee of DHS appropriations for 12 years, and I was chair of General Government for eight of my 12 years, and um, so and chaired that committee. Uh, because all uh, cities and towns and general government issues. Were you ever the only woman on the committee on any of these? I would say, you know, uh, there are more committees now than there were when I was there, a lot more committees. So the committees now have a less number of legislators on the committees because they've expanded them so, to so many uh, but, you know, there were 48 of us, and we only had, like, uh, four or uh, five that met, like, on Monday and, and Tuesday and divided the week. Monday, Tuesday was the, the days, and Thursday was the days of the committees. And so I, I wouldn't say I was the only woman ever. Um, maybe subcommittee of appropriations in DHS I was at a few years, but primarily... You know, there were women uh, on all my committees, pretty much. Did you have a particular role model or mentor? Yes. Yeah. So, well, uh, as uh, in, when I was very young, my oh, mentor was Carl Albert. And, of course, him uh, uh, Carl Albert's birthday and my birthday, same day. <laughs> and uh, and then, of course, Lyle Bourne. I, he wasn't in the legis He wasn't in Congress when I, you know, as, as I was going. He was, but I didn't pay that much attention to it at the time. But uh, but uh, Congressman Boren was very, very, um, I, I, his life and his his uh, legacy, I guess, and, and seeing him and my, and my dad and grandfather loved him so, so that made me love him that much more. And, um, and then uh, uh, Jim Townsend was Corporation Commissioner and he lived over by Shawnee and Bethel or Shawnee area in Wanette. He was very uh, active and came to uh, Wanette where, when I was in school. I'd seen him numerous times, and he was someone I always looked up to, Jim Townsend. And uh, those were the three, I guess, that I looked at. And then, of course, uh, Senator Bourne and, and Pres you know, Governor then. But... Um, Mostly men then. Well, they're right, but but they the women, the politics, but they were the ones in politics. There, I, the women weren't in state offices at the time. Of course, Norma Eagleton was the first woman I ever remembered that was corporation commissioner, and Patience Ladding was the mayor of Oklahoma City. I thought, oh my, you know, boy, that's great, <laughs> you know, because that was big deal <laughs> back then. But I remember the names. But um, as far as being, um, yeah, I. I looked up to them and respected them. But at the time, there just weren't women, you know, that was in those positions back then to look up as far as politics at the time. Did you have to change your attire? Many women I've interviewed have said it was so cold in the chamber they had to uh, It <laughs> was. At least a sweater. With a them. sweater you, you, it is very cold in, in the rooms, the meeting rooms. And I'm very cold natured anyway, so yes, I mean, they just had to wear, you wore heavy jackets all year, you know, because summers when you met, uh, when you'd meet in session primarily and, and from uh, January until June, but uh, it was it was cold. You just wear really heavy jackets, suits, you know, suit jackets. You'd wear fall and winter stuff all year, but <laughs> you would because it was it was cold. It was always called. How many times did you have to switch office space? Twice. Oh, just, just well, bad. once, once, once is all. I, um, I was in. I was on the fifth floor, and there was a, a office, two offices in one at the end of the hall on five. Uh, there were two of us: Senator Ben Robinson and I were suite mates for um, six years. And then I moved to the fourth floor and was there for six years. That's good. A lot of them switch around a lot. It oh, they do, but I was only, I only had one office other than the one I started in. Just well, that's what was your last day, the very last <laughs> day? Why? The very last day and still not knowing, mm -hmm. you know, what I was going to do when we were in session because mm -hmm. I was, 
I was there till the 18th of November that year, you know, that following year, but it wasn't in session. But um, knowing, you know, I was having to deal with my husband's health. And and uh, so the last day, I was there till 5 o'clock on that Friday when we adjourned. And very emotional because I didn't know if I'd be back. Because, and of course you don't anyway, because you're running for office. And I was up for election and had every intentions of running. And, um, you know, not not knowing. It was just the, the same sine die day, you know, that uh, you finish. And you might not see that your colleagues until, you see a lot of them, but there's a lot of them you won't see until you go back and uh, you start meeting in December, January. And then goes full blown in February, but um, just emotional. Always, it was always emotional. Last day was always emotional. Um, have I forgotten to ask anything? Do, can you think of anything that we haven't covered? Oh, just uh, no. I'll just my notes right okay. Here. Just uh, it's something with prescription assistance. A bill for for seniors, I guess, helping. Well, what we tried to do numerous times was to try to take medications like in nursing homes that are on the bubble packs. We tried numerous times for years to allow those medications, because they had not been touched, to be distributed throughout the communities or in towns where it do the health departments or somewhere where people was not able to buy, purchase their medications because most of those are the same medications that people have for high blood pressure, diabetes, just regular, you know, uh, just regular medications that a lot of seniors, especially seniors, need. And we would just flush them down the stool because drug companies couldn't take them back, drug stores couldn't take them back, even if they were in bubble packs and not had been touched, but just have to destroy them. So I worked numerous years trying to get that done, trying to get that passed. Did it? No, did it. not not really. We tried to, and at time uh, there was a time that they were allowed to be placed in clinics, you know, uh, health clinics, the people free clinics, but it was just it, the paperwork was tremendous for a lot of people. Did you do any lobbying? Did I then or um, any? Any time. Any time. Well, I did before I was in the Senate. I lobbied for county issues. I would, you know, go and talk to, I, I was just a county assessor at the time, and of course I was on the legislative committee of the state, state committee of the Assessor Association. So I lobbied like that and, like I said, helped draft bills with the, with the legislator and staff uh, as far as some of our issues. Uh, but again, I, like I do now, I just, I, I'm at the Capitol and work on issues for my organization. I'm, I'm a full-time employee. I'm a full-time executive director for the Council of Governments. But my, one of my jobs my, is to assist and work on issues that, that affect cities, towns, and counties. That, that's who we represent and uh, work on those issues at the Capitol, just like a concerned citizen, but I'm not a paid lobbyist. I'm just, you know, employed full-time director and I go to Capitol and work on those issues for... You've done that since you... Since 2000. Yes. I went to work immediately. I'm still working for the company seven years that... almost seven years that I went to work for. October of 2000. You said you have two daughters. Mm -hmm. Have they gone into politics? No. Any... any, any no and <laughs> will not. No. Oh, no. I think they got enough of their politics with their mother. <laughs> No, that neither one of them uh, have a desire to do that. And no, no. siblings that are going to take up the torch? No brothers or sisters? No. No? No. You're it. I'm it. I was the only, the lone politician that ever went into, uh, you know, put their name on a ballot, and I probably will be the only one, it looks like, of the seven. You earned your bachelor's degree from? University of Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> but, but I did. <laughs> Public yeah. administration. So the public you administration. To do yes. Your life is pretty much yes. Not as planned anyway. Yes. Way, yes. I and I didn't begin my college education. I didn't have a day of college. Uh, I graduated from high school, married, went to work. You know, got and uh, 
And so uh, I didn't attend college, but it was another one of my dreams and one of my uh, goals was to uh, go to school go to and get my degree. And when my youngest daughter graduated high school from high school in 93, she graduated from high school. I started my college education that fall. And I said, whether she goes with me or she doesn't, I'm, I'm going to take some classes. And I did. And I finished in five, four and a half years. So you did that while you were doing Yes, sentence. Sentence. Mm -hmm. Started in 93, fall of 93. And I took off one semester when I campaigned in 96. Uh, my, uh, none of the people that helped me would let me. I had a campaign manager then, um, but I, uh, she wouldn't let me go to school. I just hated that. <laughs> I loved school. I loved to take classes. And I graduated in 98. And you weren't in charge, she was? She was in charge. <laughs> yes, she was in charge. <laughs> I couldn't do anything, but she okay. <laughs> so anyway, it was, it was great. It was it's interesting great. to see how it chose to have a woman. Oh yes. oh, yes. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, they're organized. Yes. <laughs> I'm not, but she was. That's, that's oh, true. she's so organized. Yes, yes, she was. I mean, she was unbelievable. Very, very good friend. And she she just organized and kept me where I was supposed to go, told me every day where I was supposed to go. <laughs> so she was great. Where great. do you see yourself five years from now? I don't know if I if you hear. Retirement? No. Oh, ten, ten years to retirement, I guess. Well, I, you know, uh, I'm retired, so uh, until I'm 65. Well, I am 57 now, and uh, I'm planning on working till I'm 90. Here? And then, oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I say, everybody says, well, Trish, what are you going to do? Aren't you retired? And I say, hey, I'm going to work till I'm 90, and then I'm going to travel to my hundred. Then I'll quit. <laughs> That's been a, just a thing that we talk about all the time because I, I am a workaholic. I mean, I love to work. I can't imagine myself uh, not having a full-time job somewhere. I can't imagine. But uh, where I see myself is I have to be 66 before I can retire anyway and start drawing my Social Security. And I'm 57, so I have no intentions of uh, retiring before then. And, you know, if God lets me be healthy and I'm just fine and, you know, if it's the Lord's will. So uh, that's my plan is to just continue to work. And of course, my daughter, my oldest daughter, and I have a snow cone stand. Uh, we have, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. And uh, uh, so we opened that this summer, this last summer, and just love it. So, oh, it did well. Well, it did well the first two months. It was so rainy and cold. We didn't, we didn't do all that well because it was just so cool. And then they killed us the next two months. With it was so busy, and then when school starts, you might as well just close it down because you just don't have anybody. Everybody's money goes for school supplies and clothes and kids' uh, events and functions at school. And, so it's just snow cones aren't a top priority when school starts. So <laughs> anyway, but uh, so we're closed. You know, we closed it down and we'll open up in April. But just, I love it. It was fun. It was fun. It's fun. Uh, big girls lemonade stand. Right? Big girls lemonade stand. <laughs> yes. Well, did you travel much when you were in the Senate? Did you have to go to D.C. or Alabama? I went, to, but I. I was one that took very few trips. I didn't. I probably in the twelve years I was there. Honestly, I've tried to figure figure out where I were the the conferences that I attended, and I don't know the true numbers, but I probably didn't travel ten different functions in twelve years. Wow. I just didn't. Took well, care of home. took care of home, took care of my district, and I was in school a lot. And uh, at the time, from ninety, you know, ninety three to ninety eight, and I I, ten, I chose to to go to school and I chose to if I had any free time at all and I uh, I took night classes uh, during session and uh, up here in Oklahoma City so uh, did I did you go through the ceremony graduation yes ceremony? I did yeah, every every inch of it <laughs> I <laughs> said Trish you. why would you do that you're 48 years old and I said because I can <laughs> and because that's the the greatest one of the greatest accomplishments of my life is to get my degree just a oh oh my 
good role model for your children. Yes, I well, I just want my girls to know that it doesn't matter. You can be 43 years old and start school. You're never too old to learn. And you can, you know, everything that you do in your life, is, it should be for you and your family and, and for the people that you love. So that's what you should do no matter what. If you don't have anything else, I can give you my last question. Okay. When history is written about you, what would you like for it to say? <laughs> Tough question. Um, but you did the best you could. That I truly cared about people. Mm -hmm. And that... Um, that if they had a need, and if I could help them, I did. Because people is what I love the most. I love to, to help people and care about people. And my family, of course, was first, but oh my goodness. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. But um, I guess it, it just, I want, I'd like for people to say that I really cared and loved people. I really cared about them. I'd say people in Oklahoma will definitely say that, <laughs> especially your district from, from what I've read and what you've said. Well, I just want, you know, I want to, to make a difference for the better and never wanted to do anything that made it hard, made it a hardship for people. If there was ever a decision that I made or a vote that I cast that affected anyone negative. I just want people to say that I, I just want them to understand I didn't know any better because I would have ever done it if I'd have known it. Because it's very important that um, people are loved and cared about and taken care of. If they're not able to take care of themselves, that's what government's supposed to do. See, there you need to run again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm getting too old. <laughs> I look at people and I think, oh my, that person didn't run till they were 65. And I, thought, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Betty Boyd was I'm telling you, I, there's a number of people that so have waited. Do, do, 60, do one at 65. <laughs> oh my. Well, I, you know, I'm sorry. I oh. just, um, you know, that. Uh, that's why I ran in the first place and I hope I, I, I never... I never want people to say that I forgot that. I never want people to say that she got in office and she forgot where she came from and she forgot who she was and why she did it. I hope not one person in the state can say that. Well, they wouldn't have kept re-electing you for 32 years <laughs> if that was the case. Well, so you have yeah. no worries. Oh, well, I just, uh, yeah, I, I was very blessed. Very, very blessed. Um, I am. Uh, just can't say, I'd say my life has been wonderful. Just wonderful. Sounds like it to me. Well, thank you very much for sharing it with me today. Well, thank you for allowing me to. That's great. I uh, hope it turns out okay. <laughs>